I'm Philip Münzel. I'm a software developer and flight instructor on the X-Plane team. You know me for bringing this little gadget to you in X-Plane 1030, which you made even more useful in X-Plane 11 by making it freely resizable. And you can see some new UI elements on the top that pop up when you mouse over. For example, you can now pop out the window and move it anywhere you want, drag it over to your second monitor, however you want to set up your cockpit, resize it to whatever you need on your external monitor, or simply close the pop-up, bring it back into X-Plane, and with a simple click in the middle of the title bar, bring it back to its default size. Then we added a couple new features that are really useful. Uh, for example, let me enter another airport here. We are going to the uh, Frankfurt International Airport, which I would normally not do in a Cessna 172 since the landing fee is currently about 400 euros if I recall correctly. But landings are free in X-Plane, so we can just set up a flight to Frankfurt in X-Plane. And a new feature of the GPS in X-Plane 11 is that it allows you to select departure procedures and arrival procedures. For example, here I'm choosing the Gaxi 4 Papa departure in uh, Karlsruhe Baden-Baden Airport which is simply inserted into the flight plan then. I can do the same for arrivals, for example, loading the uh, Spessart 25 South arrival into Frankfurt. Just select it here, then select the runway we are going to 25 left. And with the range buttons, I can preview what the procedure will look like. And with the load button, simply insert it into our flight plan, and then we can go flying. The next cool feature is the X-Plane 11 default FMS, which you can drop into any airplane. The interface follows the same principles as the GPS, so you can resize it, pop it out to a window, drag it over to a second monitor and set up your cockpit in any way you like. As you can see here, the FMS draws from a global, easily updated database that we have greatly improved for X-Plane 11 because we now rely on industry standards such as AXM and ARING 424, which allow professionals to use industry tools to create and prototype procedures in X-Plane, including RNP approaches with radius to fix segments. To make a flight plan, simply click into the scratch pad for your keyboard and then you can type in the airports and then you can insert individual waypoints or you can enter airway segments. Airways can be e entered either by name and exit waypoint or you can do airway airway entries and the FMS will figure out the intersections for you. Over on the procedure side, you can of course select departure and arrival procedures for airports and then choose from the vast approach database that includes ILS, VOR, DME, NDB, RNF, GPS, RNP and GLS approaches, which now also use path points for angular vertical guidance, which is something that no other desktop flight simulator has ever done. You can see here the VPA for the final approach segment. Here you can look at information about the final approach segment, whether the vertical guidance is barometric or LPV and what kind of satellite augmentation is used, which of course would be EGNOS in the EU instead of WAS, what you see here. That's a bug. The direct intercept function is super useful for online flying and there's also a nearest airport function that you can filter by runway length and find the next suitable airport for a diversion. For VNAV, you enter the cruise altitude and from there we construct a smooth path of constant descent angle that then tells you when to start your descent and what rate you must use. This is a generic function that works without performance data of a specific aircraft. Instead, you can simply enter a different vertical path angle and the FMS will update the descent instructions accordingly. For online flying, the vertical direct to function is also super useful. You click direct intercept and then you simply dial the altitude into the autopilot, which is then copied into the FMS and then you click on the right side of a waypoint to go there at the desired altitude. Another cool function is the pilot waypoint functionality which allows you to create pilot-defined waypoints either by latitude, longitude entry or by place-bearing distance or place-bearing place-bearing entry to define a location. And then you can give this point a name and store it. 
From then on, it is available not only in the FMS, but also in all the GPSs of all planes and x plane. There's a couple more functions in the FMS that would take too long to describe here. So I just want you to try them out yourself. And I wish you a lot of fun. See you.